The first pre-release for 1.20.5 brought us data pack version 39 with lots of new item predicates, particle updates and more. My name is Sliced Lime and I'm here to show you all the changes. Let's start with predicates, where the equipment entity subpredicate now has a body field that can be used to match equipment in the body slot. There are new item subpredicates as well for container, bundle contents, attribute modifiers, firework explosion, fireworks, trim, writable book content and the written book content component. In general, fields in these predicates that match the name of the field in the component match that field's value. Generally, the type is the same as the type of the field in the component, but fields in the subpredicate are optional and not specifying it means that there are no requirements on matching that field. There are some exceptions to this. Integer and float fields are matched by min-max ranges. Any registry types, that is, most namespaced IDs, are replaced with a matcher that can be an ID, a list of IDs, or a hashtagged tag name. And any lists are replaced by a new collection matcher type. These collection matchers can have a size field that is used to match the collection size, a min-max range. You can also specify a contains field, which is a list of predicates for the element. For instance, for a list of items, the contains field would be a list of item predicates. All of these conditions must match for the collection to match, but there's no requirement for every item in the collection to be matched. A single element in the component collection can also match multiple predicates. You can also specify a count field, which is a list of matchers on element counts. Each such matcher has a test field, which is a predicate on the item in the list, and a count field, which is a min-max range describing how many such elements should exist for the test to pass. This pack version also has changes to loot functions. The set contents loot function has been changed with the new added component field, which is mandatory and describes which type of component to set. Possible values are container, bundle contents and charged projectiles. The existing contents of the target component will be replaced, and bundle contents and charged projectiles will ignore any empty item stacks. The unused type field has also been removed. The set custom data function has also been modified, so the tag field now accepts both the existing format of SMBT in string form and the full data in inline format. And the limit count function can no longer be used to create item stacks with more items than the stack limit. There are also several new loot functions in this version. Modify contents is a way to modify the items inside a container by applying an item modifier to each element. It has the standard conditions field like other loot functions. You specify which component the target is in the component field, exactly like for the set contents function. And the modifier field is either a modifier or a list of modifiers to apply to every item inside the container. The set item function sets the item type of the item stack without changing the count or the components. It also has the normal conditions list and a single other field called item with the new item type ID. Set custom model data sets a custom model data component on the item. It also has conditions and then a value field which is an integer number provider for the value to set. Finally, the filtered function applies a sub function only to the items that match a certain item predicate. Other than conditions, it also has an item filter field specifying an item predicate to use for matching and a modifier field specifying the functions to apply to the matching items. Let's move on to item components. Items are no longer allowed to have both a max stack size component and a max damage component at the same time. That is to say, you cannot have an item that is both stackable and damageable. Brewing stands can now handle items with custom stack sizes over 64 correctly, and the limit of maximum 100 pages in written books has been removed. The saturation modifier field on the food component has been replaced by saturation. Saturation is the exact amount added to the player's saturation level when the food is eaten, while the saturation modifier was related to the nutrition value of the food item. To calculate the saturation from the previous setup of an item, multiply the nutrition by two times the saturation modifier. In other data news, the custom color of potion contents is no longer slightly transparent in area effect clouds. The optional Equipment Loot Table field in the spawn potentials of spawners and trial spawners has been replaced with an Equipment field, which is an object with both a Loot Table field specifying the Loot Table to use and a Slot Drop Chances field, which is an optional map of Equipment Slot ID to Drop Chance. You can also instead specify a single value, which will cause that Drop Chance to be used for all Equipment Slots. And the Anger Time and Angry At fields of mobs can now be set when summoning the mob. Let's move on to some attribute fixes. 
You can now fly in creative mode even if the gravity attribute is increased. Jumping is now entirely disabled if the jump strength attribute is set to zero. And the fishing land now appears in the right place for rescaled players in third person. Let's talk about particles. The representation of particles in commands has been changed. Instead of some particles having extra parameters, this is now handled by passing the parameter configuration in curly braces. The same representation is now used for particles stored in area effect clouds, and this data matches how particles were previously specified in world generation files. Some changes have also been made to these particle representations. The block particle type field value has been renamed to block state, and that field now also accepts a block ID, which represents the default block state of that block. Item particles have similarly had their value field renamed to item, and that field now also accepts an item ID, which represents that item with all default components. The count field is now ignored. The entity effect particle options value field is now called color, and now accepts a list of floats representing the RGBA color values as well as the previous representation of a packed integer. And the dust color transition particle fields from color and to color have been renamed to snake case. In command news, the pickup item for arrow, trident and fireball entities is now exposed to the item command. The force load command now gives the right resulting output in chat. And the target of frogs, axolotls, hoglins, zoglins, piglins and breezes can now be used with the execute on target command. In tag news, the tools item collection tag has been removed and the breaks decorated pots tag now directly has its former contents. There's a new entity type tag called punchable projectiles, listing which projectiles it should be possible to deflect by punching them. And there's a new enchantment tag in this version called tooltip order, which determines the order in which enchantments show up in tooltips. Finally, custom world generation news. First of all, note that the format changes for particles apply to world generation files as well. And there's a new option for terrain adaptation for structures called encapsulate, which increases density not just around the outside of the structure, but also around the individual pieces of that structure. And that's all for Datapack version 39. My name is Celeste Lime, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.